this video we're going to continue our dynamic block lesson and what we're going to do is we're going to look at our door and we're going to add some more function to it so what we would like to do now is we would like to add the ability to flip the door because one thing that happens is the door swing will change and so we want to make that an automatic little function of the dynamic block so to do that let's double click on your block click on door tell it OK and what we need to do is add a flip parameter. So if we go to our parameters and we go down here to the bottom or to the middle, we see that we have a flip parameter. Now a flip parameter is basically a mirror. And the only difference between a mirror and a flip is that when you do a mirror, you can retain your objects. You have the option to retain your objects. When you do a flip, uh, that's not going to happen. You don't even have that option. So that's probably why it's named differently. Uh, but when you think about it, just think about it as a mirror. So when you define a flip parameter, it wants to know specify base point of reflection line. The reflection line is basically the mirror line, the axis about which you're going to perform the flip. So I'm just going to draw a line just straight up and that's going to be my, my mirror line or my reflection line. And then it wants to know where I want to put the label. So I'm just going to put it up here at the top. I can select it and if I go to properties, I can look that I have the, the, the flip name and the flip description. So I could say, I could change the name to be door swing. And for the flip description, I can say something a little bit more user friendly, maybe like specify door swing. And notice that we have base state name, flip state name, and we can change that. And what that means is in its, in its base state, when it's not flipped, what is that called? So we could say that that is a, I believe, a left hinge would be the correct wording. All right, and then we can come over here and we can select our flip state. When it is flipped, what is it? It's going to be a right hinge. Okay, and it would actually help if I spelled them right. So I'm going to go ahead and fix those right now. Let's see what we need to do. Oh, we got a little warning box here. No actions associated. So we got to come over here, select your actions from your block authoring palette and we want to select a flip action. The flip action asks for the parameter, so I want to go ahead and select my flip parameter, and then it wants us to select the objects. So let's just go ahead and select our door objects. We see that it puts our little icon right here, and we can move it wherever we would like, and let's test this out. So test block. We select our block. We see we have a little arrow here, a little flip arrow. We click on it, and it flips. Everything looks great, but while we have it flipped, let's just go ahead and test our stretch. Now our stretch is way over here, so what what's up with that? Let's check it out. Click it and stretch it, and look what happens. Everything kind of goes crazy. Um, that's definitely not what we were looking for. So we look like we had it, but something's not quite right. So let's close our test block. And if we select our flip action and we look at what objects were selected, and if you remember, we selected our actual, our door properties, our door objects. We also have to select all of our different actions that we had selected before. So we need to go ahead and add those to it. So what we can do is we can select, one way we can do it is we can select the action and we can tell it that we want to modify the selection set or select a new selection set. I'm just going to go ahead and select a new one. And where it asks me to select objects, I'm just going to select everything. That way I get my parameters, I get my actions, I get everything, and everything will flip whenever the flip, um, whenever I click on the flip action, everything else will flip and so that my stretch action will be where it belongs. So let's test it again. Select our block, flip. Notice now we can stretch from this side. Okay, we see that we still have a problem. So continue to learn through our example. We're going to close the text, the test block editor. The problem lies in our selection set and in AutoCAD 2010. In previous versions of AutoCAD, you could select these different actions. And we can't select these different actions whenever we do a regular selection and let's take a look at that one more time I'm gonna go ahead and select action set new selection set I'm gonna do a crossing and I'm gonna select everything there and notice it says down here that it found eight objects 
if I instead selected my action, tell it new selection set, and I'm just going to type all. Notice down here it says 15 were found, 3 were not in the current space. Go ahead and hit enter. Now let's test our block. We can flip it, we can grip it, and we can drag it, and everything works fine. I'm not sure why you can't actually select the actions with a simple crossing. Um, I don't know if that's a glitch or a bug, or, or there very well may be in a system variable somewhere that determines if they're selectable. And, and, and if you happen to know, I'd be interested to hear from you. So uh, send me an email if you know how to select these things um, just for the regular selection or crossing. Because even if you were to go and tell it, I'm going to modify the selection set, I'm just going to try to pick it. Notice that I can't even pick it whenever I'm doing that. So anyway, not real sure why it's like that. If you're using an, an older version, uh, you can select the actions. Uh, but in 2010, you need to select all and everything will work the way that we were wanting it to work. I'm going to go ahead and close the block editor. I'm going to save my changes. And now we have our dynamic block. I'm going to flip it, stretch it. Everything works the way that we were wanting it to work. So that's today's lesson. Go ahead and do a little bit of experimentation with that. And in our future lessons, we'll continue to explore the power of dynamic blocks.